Hi there. My name is Tony Stephen, and I get to be the minister at the West Church in Bankery. My son and I love playing football. We love watching football, going to see a football match. We actually love to invite people to come with us. The last time we were able to physically go, we invited some friends the morning of the game. And it was a bit tricky having done that because we did it on the spur of the moment. And then we had to say, actually, we need to go home and see if we can actually book you some seats near us before we could even let you know if you can go or not. So, so they had to wait until we could get it organized just about an hour or so. And then thankfully, we did get it organized and they came and we all had a great time. Imagine being excited, asking to watch something, a football match, and then having to wait to find out if you could watch it, and then finding out that in actual fact, you weren't just going to watch the game, you were going to get to play on the pitch. That would be so much more than you could ever have expected. In the first century, a group of people, a nation known as the Jews, were waiting, hoping for a better time. We can sympathise. A young Jewish rabbi called Jesus of Nazareth had been stirring things up, saying and doing things that actually escalated to the point where even his own Jewish leaders were trying to get rid of him. He is at one point in his capital city, in Jerusalem, for a feast called Passover. And a writer called John, or we call him John, tells us that there were Greeks coming to these, this festival, this feast. Nothing in a Jewish piece of writing is there by accident. These Greeks couldn't be Jews. That has to happen by birth. So presumably they were fans. Fans of the Jewish way. Or maybe fans of Jesus himself and his movement. They ask to see Jesus. Jesus, we're told, doesn't answer their request. Seems a bit rude. Instead, he goes on to talk about hours and seeds, making them wait. What is going on? Jesus says, according to John, that the hour has come, which you've been working if you've been working your way through John's story, because it's been 12 chapters about Jesus' life, you'll have heard that Jesus has been saying up to now that the hour has not yet come. But now, in response to this request, he says the hour has come. The hour for what? He says for the Son of Man to be glorified. Son of man is a term that he's taken to calling himself. It's a name that would ring bells with his Jewish listeners because it comes from a book of hope they clung to in difficult times called the book of Daniel. And in there, uh, one like a son of man is part of how God will put things to right, bring better times. The Jewish people had a fair idea of what they thought that would mean. Currently, they're under the boot of the Roman Empire. So what they hope for, expect, is a son of man to be a, a warrior, a king, a leader, to gather another rebel army and smash the current empire and ideally set up a new Jewish empire. But this Jesus doesn't go for the expected it turns out that their hopes, expectations, their ideas of what should happen have actually been far too small. Jesus talks about seeds. That when a seed is planted, it seems to die for the benefit of the, the crop that will follow. The Jesus story is about 
sacrifice. It's about death. It's about self-giving love. The hour that Jesus talks about seems to actually be about rejecting the stories, the expectations of the time. To reject the story of empire, status, power, wealth, fame, consumption. This story is not about inward looking interests and lifestyle, or as he calls it, this life. It's not about their particular survival and interests, which is the way that the empire is encouraging everyone to think and to act. Instead, Jesus lives out a bigger plan. God's plan. And this plan is not about empire, but instead about life. The life that he says they were made for. Life in all its fullness, eternal kind of life, a life of service, of self-giving, love of sacrifice. The victory in the story, the freedom, is not from the latest empire, the latest lockdown. It's over far more than that. It's a victory over death. It's a victory over the human addiction to mucking things up that gets in the way. It's a victory over all the barriers that get in the way of the relationships between God and his people, between his people and each other, and between his people and the creation. These Greeks, Gentiles, outsiders, fans, simply ask to see Jesus. Did he ignore their request? It seems to me that what this Jesus is saying and doing and living out in his life and his death and his resurrection means that there is good news. And the good news is that those Greeks, and in fact every outsider, gets to join in. To join in fully with what God is doing. To be who they were always made to be. So much more than they could ever have hoped for. To be partners in what God is doing. It's like asking just to watch and finding that you were always meant to join in. 